Добрый день, глубокоуважаемые коллеги и гости. Позвольте за guests, dear colleagues. We are beginning the panel session for the defense of the thesis of Alexandra Nikitina. The thesis is submitted in conformity with the requirements for the academic degree of the candidate of philology. The specialization is foreign literature, literature of the Middle and the Far East. The evolution of the character portrayal in Chinese prose of 1949-1999 under the appropriate regulation which is issued by St. Petersburg State University. I am Professor Starazhuk, head of the Department of Chinese Philology, is the head of this dissertation board. Let me introduce my colleagues. Marina Evgenievna Kravtsova, Professor of the Department of Philosophy and Cultural Studies. Professor Suvorov, he is a professor of the department of the Department of Arabian Philology. Professor Rybakov, he is the senior researcher in the Institute of Oriental Manuscripts of the Russian Academy of Science. And Professor Van Lier, he is a professor of Beijing Foreign Studies University, who is attending our defense remotely via Skype. First of all, I would like to say that according to the federal law number 127 on science and scientific policy, St. Petersburg State University is entitled to confer academic degrees. And there is an appropriate order which allows to confer academic degrees. This order was issued on the 1st of September 2016. The number of the order is 642. It will be called just the order. So the panel discussion is valid, providing two-thirds of the appropriate board members are present. The total number should make fewer than four people. The dissertation board consists of five people, five of which are present, and Professor Van Leer is attending the defense remotely via Skype. Therefore, we have a quorum. Now I would like to say a few words about the agenda of our defense. The panel discussion cannot exceed two hours. First, the chairman's presentation about the document submitted by the candidate for the degree and their conformity with the requirements. Then the chairman's reply to questions, if any, no more than five minutes. Two, the candidate's presentation providing an overview and findings of the research, no more than 15 minutes. Three, can question to the candidate regarding the presentation, no more than two minutes for each question. Four, reports on the thesis provided by the board members. They will give a detailed account of their opinions, suggestions and questions. No more than 10 minutes for each person. The candidates' comments about the reports on the thesis. The candidate will be replying the questions afterwards. No more than 15 minutes. Number six, questions from the audience. Those who want, they will be able to give a brief account of their ideas or ask questions to the candidate about the research. No more than five minutes. Here we have a registration form which should be filled in if you want to participate in this discussion. Now the overall answer of the candidate to the questions presentation of the thesis supervisor, no more than three minutes. Then there will be a five-minute break before the open voting on the issue of conferring or non conferring the academic degree. During this discussion, there will not be an online broadcast. Open voting, vote counting, 
and recording the, rec the results of the votes in the protocol. Then making a decision whether to confer or not to confer the academic degree. And candidates closing speech, no more than two minutes. So, uh, first of all, I would like to say that you should switch off your mobile phones. Thank you. Now, there is an audio and video recording of our defense on the website of St. Petersburg State Univer University, and the defense is being interpreted into English. So, the thesis of Alexandra Andreevna Nikitina, submitted in conformity with the requirement for the academic degree, the specialization is 100103, foreign literature. The topic of the thesis is the evolution of the character portrayal in Chinese prose of 1949-1999. It was approved for the defense on the 17th of April. 2017, order number 38-90-1. The dissertation board was set up as ordered on the 14th of April, order number 36-31-1. Oh, and I have already spoken about the board members. The candidate has submitted the following documents. An application submitted to the center of expert, of expert advice. The dissertation was submitted on the, on the 17th of March, 2017. Then the report of the supervisor. The supervisor is a candidate of philology, Professor Radionov. List of works which describe the research findings, including three articles which were published in peer-reviewed journals recommended by the Minister of Education of Science, and one article was published in the Scopus journal. Letter of verification certifying that the candidate has passed qualifying exams, as well as a graduation certificate which was issued on the 24th of June 2011. The thesis in English and in Russian was submitted both electronically and in printed form. The dissertation complies with the state standard and the reference list also complies with the appropriate state standard. I must say that all the above mentioned documents comply with item 12 of section 3 of the order on granting academic degrees in St. Petersburg State University Appendix number 1. Have you got any questions? There are no questions. Now I give the floor to Alexandra Nikitina. Good afternoon, Mr. Chairman, members of the dissertation board. Let me bring to your attention the dissertation titled The Evolution of the Character Portrayal in Chinese Prose of the Second Half of the 20th Century. The term character portrayal was borrowed from the works of the academician Dmitry Likachev. In Russia's Chinese studies, this term was first introduced in the academic discourse by Evgeny Sergeyev characterization in classical Chinese literature has been covered in detail in the Soviet and Russian synology. Techniques um, of this 
character portrayal are discussed in two monographs of the academician Boris Rifton, The Historical Saga and Folklore Tradition in China, and From Myth to Novel, The Evolution of the Character Portray in Chinese Literature. Another important work is the monograph by Vladimir Simonov, Evolution of the Chinese Novel, End of the 18th, the beginning of the 20th century. For many centuries, China resorted to stereotypic methods of character portrayal, and these typical methods of depiction, depiction in Chinese prose prevailed until the 20th century. The individualization of characters was rather an exception. However, we can find some successful examples of individualization in classical prose. For example, Vladimir Simonov greatly appreciates the individual, individualism of characters in such novels as Jin Pin Mi, and dream of the Red Chamber. Modern Chinese literature has received enough attention from literary scholars of Russia and abroad. Scholars have repeatedly noted the uniqueness of the character portrayal in classical and modern Chinese literature. However, the sphere of characters of modern Chinese literature as an evolving system of ideas, characters, and artistic means has not become the subject of significant research yet. My study was intended to examine the development of the pool of characters in Chinese prose from 1949 to 1999 to trace the gradual qualitative change of the character portrayal in selected short stories, novellas and novels. It seemed productive to consider the balance between official ideology and its actual implementation in portrayal of literary characters. For this end, I have referred to a large corpus of regulatory materials in the spheres of literature and art of China in 1949 till 1999. The materials under study included 33 representative works of fiction of various genres, stories, novellas, and novels. The novels have been selected among the seminal works which enjoyed wide readership, attracted the attention of literary criticism, and received Lu Xun or Mao Dun literature prizes. I have studied three historical periods. Number one, from 1949 till 1976, from the establishment of the People's Republic of China to the end of the Cultural Revolution. Number two, from 1977 till 1989, the first period of the development of contemporary literature since the announcement of the reform and openness policy. Number three, uh, the 1990s, the second period of the development of contemporary literature. The results of the study were presented at international conferences in Russia, as well as at international conferences organized by European and American associations of Chinese studies. I have published four papers. Three papers were published in the SPBU Bulletin and one in a Scopus listed journal, the Archive Orientalny. Let me outline the results of my study. Throughout the whole 50-year period from 1949 to 1976, speakers at the Congress of the China Federation of Literary and Art Circles and the Chinese Writers Association insisted that the ideals which the authorities attempted to implement in Chinese societies had to be reflected in literary characters. It manifested, manifested itself in the most exaggerated form in the period from 1949 to 1976, when the party leadership of the People's Republic of China had a monopoly on all decisions in the field of literature, and the ideological aspect of the literary heroes was much more important than their artistic credibility. The literary policy of this period was based on the artistic principles formulated by Mao Zedong at the Yan'an Forum in 1942. Interestingly, interestingly, after the end of the Cultural Revolution, statements about the relevance um, of his views on art were still being made. However, over time, the official position of the authorities concerning literature has taken the form of recommendations rather than compulsory requirements for writers to follow. Since the second half of the 1960s, Chinese society and literature have long remained in stagnation and isolation, being limited to a specific set of ideas and patterns. At the turn of the 1970s and 1980s, the country has experienced profound changes. The government proclaimed the policy of the economic reforms and openness, and the mental emancipation in literature and art. Openness in literature can be interpreted as the author's openness to new subjects, as a variety of characters, a more in-depth depiction of their mentality. Since 1977, the party leadership gradually loosened the ideological control over literature, which enabled writers to choose 
different artistic methods and create different types of characters. Since the early 1990s, literary market demands began to prevail over the state regulation, which immediately resulted in greater diversity of literary movements in general and the variety of heroes and the techniques of character portrayal in particular. During the second half of the 20th century, there, there were discussions in the press on the sphere of characters in Chinese literature with the participation of literary critics, writers and party leaders. Particularly violent disputes took place in the 1960s on the issues of the man in the middle and their requirement to the right to write the truth. They represented a response to the dominance of the heroic characters in literature with the ideal features that were far from reality. Literary heroes of 1949 and 1976 are characterized by a high degree of formalization and logical bias. During this period, the fear of characters mainly consisted of peasants, soldiers, party workers, revolutionary leaders with an active life position and almost exclusively positive qualities. They contrasted with the negative characters. These could, could be people with the backward mentality, the objects of criticism and satire, or obvious villains, landlords, uh, Japanese invaders, members of the Nationalist Party and its sympathizers. Their evil nature was emphasized by the portrayal of their physical appearance and manner of speech. The dichotomy ideal hero versus villain was based on the traditional Chinese perception of legendary heroes of ancient and medieval literature. The speech of the characters is replete with political terms and slogans. Natural human instincts and feelings are nullified. Fellowship based on the common ideological views was the basic form of relationship. The writer's attempts to enrich the psychological portrait of the heroes result in the depiction of a minor character with unsteady ideological beliefs. He expressed doubt and hesitation, had his own weaknesses and mistakes. By the second half of the 1960s, villains almost completely leave the sphere of characters in literature, which consists at the time only of the positive heroes. A positive hero becomes more passive, loses his rebellious spirit and exclusive appearance, becomes a member of the collective system. This also results in the rejection of the type of a man in the middle. The year 1968 saw the introduction of the principle of putting emphasis on three things. Positive characters had to be put forward among others, then the heroic characters were highlighted and ultimately the main focus was put on a heroic protagonist. Another method of characterization was the triple accentuation. A positive character was accentuated by a negative one. A heroic personality, in turn, was juxtaposed with a positive character, and the accent was put on a heroic protagonist depicted among other heroic personalities. During the Cultural Revolution, literal life in China was reduced to performance of the ten revolutionary novel plays. The individual literary work was replaced by the collective work. Fiction was written by the anonymous creative teams of workers, peasants, and soldiers. Professional writers were almost completely excluded from the literary life. Since 1977, literature gradually becomes less formalized and less ideologically biased. Character portrayal in literature of 1977 till 1989 was marked by a radical rejection of the dichotomy positive versus negative hero by a variety of types of characters, including educated, including educated youth, middle-aged intellectuals, small citizens, former Red Guards, immigrants. Social and class issues are replaced by the spiritual strivings of the characters, their reflections on their desires and an appeal to the cultural heritage of the country's past. Personal weaknesses are no longer a specific feature of the negative characters as it used to be in previous years. The authors draw attention to deficiencies and peculiarities in the human nature. They come back to the issue of national identity. Certain sketchiness, cliches, idealization were still present in the sphere of characters. Of the scarlet literature, 
literature of the meditation on the past, literature of the reforms, and to a lesser extent in the root-seeking literature due to the ideological component of these movements. The character portrayal in literature of the 1990s demonstrates a resolute shift from the politi politics and the approach a great era and idiot, an ordinary era. The characters of this period are not generalized images of the historical era. On the contrary, the image of the historical period is influenced by the personal characteristic of the heroes. The author focus for, for, the author focuses on describing the unique human experience in the daily routine, the interpersonal relations and inner striving. The sphere of characters of this period is remarkable for its subjective insight. The characters have strong individuality and originality to the point of exaggeration and portrayal of bizarre personal traits. Since the main development vector of the character portrayal has been identified in my study, a study on the marginal movements in prose, avant-garde and postmodernist literature would be all the more interesting. In addition, it seems logical to continue the research in the sphere of characters in literature of the 21st century. Another option for the development of this theme could be a study on certain types of characters in the literary works from different periods of the 20th century and until today. Thank you for your attention. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Are there any questions? There are no questions. Thank you very much. You can now take a seat. We haven't received any external reports on the theaters. So let's now move on to discussing the reports on the theaters from the members of the dissertation board. So the thesis of Alexandra Nikitina is devoted to a very relevant and interesting topic because studies in the area of personality images, religious and folk characters is quite a common thing in literary studies. However, there are few works that examine the sphere of characters as a reflection of the nation's view of the world at a certain point of its development. And there are even few such studies in synology. Therefore, the thesis of Alexandra Nikitin is a relevant and long-awaited research because it fills in significant gaps in Chinese literary studies. So the sphere of characters is studied in this thesis as well as it was studied by many other scholars. Here we should mention the works by Alexeyev, Minshikov, Rifitin, Sorokin, Malinovskaya, Spieshinev, Dorobtsev, Kravtsova, Alimov. The sphere of characters was examined also in such works of, as those by Serebrikov, Voskresensky, Smirnov to name but a few. But this is just a drop in the ocean in the Chinese literary heritage. Therefore, new research in this area is extremely relevant, especially if this research is devoted to literary works of several generations of writers. This can be applied to the work of Alexandra Nikitina, since she includes uh, in her material studies, uh, several generations of writers. The thesis describes the development of Chinese prose, sharp disputes which took place in the 40s and in the 50s, the role of the Communist Party, literary disputes about a man in the middle which took place in 1960s the process of creating of model heroes, cultural revolution and revival of traditional approach after 1976, literal discussions of 1980s, and the principle of 
freedom of creation enshrined in the Constitution. Dramatic events of 1989 and the invention of the laws of the market in the 1990s. The description of these processes is given in three different chapters in the thesis. These three chapters make the bulk of the thesis of Alexandra Nikitina. A detailed analysis of the historical background is not the only thing which is in the thesis. Chapters also have the analysis of representative literary works and the character portrayals. Therefore, we see that historical background and the evolution of the sphere of characters are related. The thesis is well structured and well written. The author used 257 theoretical works in Russian, English and Chinese works. The research findings were presented at four international conferences. However, there are some misprints and stylistically inappropriate statements. For example, from Lin Jin's point of view, injustice and negligence prevail in the party work and it hurts him deeply. Or when Wang Yanghong has a hard time choosing between continuing to help his mother and daughter with housework and accepting their assistance or care and ending this informal relationship for the sake of the military discipline, but he finally opts for the moon. The author emphasizes that employees of the lower ranks were not confused by the hero's pretty face and they found him smart and efficient. End of quote. And there are some other stylistic inappropriateness. However, they do not change the high quality of the work. I have one suggestion regarding the thesis. So the, st the suggestion concerns the following statement. Here I quote, ancient and medieval Chinese literature is characterized by formalization until the beginning of the 20th century, typical qualities of the character determined their social status, overshared their personality, unquote. And then this statement is developed and the author writes about the appearance and physical strength of positive characters, the dichotomy of an ideal character and um, villain and so on. I think these statements need to be explained and elaborated. Novellas of the Tang period, we see characters who are ugly and who can be described as low-ranking characters, but they have exceptional qualities and skills. For example, we find such characters in such novellas as The Kunlung Slave or Marriage is Predetermined. On the other hand, a handsome government official turned out to be vicious. For example, the short story, The Story of Hyoshiyu. This tradition persists over centuries. For example, characters in Pu Ling short stories are very typical and conventional. And they can be inconsistent with their social status. So we should not absolutize the May the Fourth Movement. Here we should say that the literal methods before 1920s were oriented at the stereotypes of Chinese folk culture. And after that period, the literary methods were guided by Western stereotypes. Therefore, some traditional narratives, for example, in stories of Ming period, can be full of cliches, but this cannot be applied to classical prose on the whole. There were periods when such generalizations were quite common, but however, in modern science, this issue should be analyzed more deeply. Despite some comments, I can say that the thesis is an original, complete and comprehensive research which has scientific novelty. It is done at a very professional level and is devoted to an issue which is important from theoretical and practical point of view. Apart from historians and literary scholars, the work can be useful to political scientists and many other scholars who are interested in how social ideas are reflected in literary works. 
the thesis is written in a convincing way. So, the thesis of Alexandra Nikitina, the evolution of the sphere of characters in the second half of the 20th century, complies with the order number 6821-1, and the, the candidate should be awarded the degree of the candidate of science, specialization literature of the Middle and Far East. Thank you. Now I give the floor to Professor Kravtsova. I would try to keep close to the report I have prepared and to make it more concise at the same time. The dissertation is the first systematic and profound analysis of Chinese prose stories, novels, and novels of the second half of, this, of the 20th century uh, in Russian Chinese literature studies. The profoundness of the study is that it gives an obvious transition from uh, analyzing creative work of single authors to understanding typical uh, features of literary process universal to uh, all the world caused by internal and external fact fact factors. Um, the dissertation lays a new foundation in understanding literary creative work of the second half of the 20th century. This is where its novelty lies. The relevance of the study lies in its interest in the interest to literary life of China, which remains little studied in the Russian landscape of humanities. Aims and objectives of the study are well formulated, which made the dissertation well structured and logical. Its contests comply with the topic. Materials of the study clearly and effectively are clearly and effectively distributed into chapters and sections. The structure facilitates comprehensive development of the topic. Interim and closing conclusions are substantiated by evidence and irrelevant to the topic. Argumentation is solid and is supported by vast empirical base. The, um, I will omit the information about the number of publications analyzed. Um, the, The dissertation uh, has real academic relevance. Uh, the, one of the advantages is that uh, Nikitina has analyzed 33 literary works. Uh, this is a really unique uh, approach. I've never seen this be so many sources analyzed before for candidates' um, dissertations. For the first time in Russian um, sinology, she has analyzed more than 10 writers of China. I have referred in this case to the third volume of the encyclopedic edition Spiritual Culture of China and have found out that out of 29 writers, uh, the author of the dissertation refers to, only 14 were mentioned um, in this encyclopedia. Sometimes um, these um, articles uh, occupy no more than half a page. Even for the well-known literary figures, uh, Nikitina uh, analyzes their little-known works. A telling example is Bart Jin's um, work, Reunion. Subsections um, are replete with theory and factual data. Apart from analyzing uh, the, the, the works set as their titles, um, and the choice of works is well explained in the introduction. Uh, Nikitina also provides short biographies of writers um, and gives comments on their uh, role in the literature of China. Um, this does not interfere with the integrity of this course, uh, but makes all the parts of the dissertation really irrelevant. Many sections of the dissertation could become, uh, could be developed into independent qualification works. Such are, um, for example, the object of study and the subject matter, then um, 
in the in the introduction, uh, she provides the periodization of the literary process. Um, it's not a common periodization uh, typical for the history of China. However, Nikitina is very convincing when she explains the choice of this periodization. In the second uh, subsection, she provides a profound analytical uh, description of the concept of character portrayal. It starts with the history of uh, its emergence, and it's based on the relevant um, works of Russian, foreign, and Chinese um, scholars. The review of literary uh, heroes is the final uh, part uh, in this section. So that's a. Uh, This part of the work really explains the author's viewpoint on the issue. The first uh, sections of all the third three chapters are a thorough study of government policy in literature. The text is highly informative. Having sat uh, with the name to examine the development of the pool of characters, uh, Nikitina has not just uh, realized this uh, aim fully, but has gone beyond the framework of the topic. In fact, she has created a unique um, overview of the history of the development of Chinese literature of the second part of the 20th century. It includes uh, three strata government policy, Number two, its influence on literary and theoretical sphere, the discussion about the functions and the topical issues of literature, uh, which creates the, de which develops uh, different literary constructs like plots and types of characters. And number three, the development of literature per se. This has not only um, allowed to follow and to explain character portrayal, but also to reconstruct the evolution of the general literary process, uh, embedding it into the historical, political, ideal and cultural context. It's not an exaggeration to say that Nikitina has reached a conceptual level in understanding literary creation, and she has outlined methodological principles which could be effectively used in other uh, literary Chinese literary studies no matter which um, historical period or genres of literature we take. All the remarks are made are not a matter of principle. There are some uh, stylistic inaccuracies. I would like, I will not focus on them. I have a general remark, is to be more attentive to literary heritage. Let me draw just one example. An attempt to create a new female female character. Um, just let me cite. Uh, so she could handle draft cattle when she was six uh, and could transport harvest when she was seven. It gives this implicit uh, allusion to a stereotypic characteristic of um, a narrator in the old Chinese prose. At 13, she could weave silk. At 14, she could cut out fabric. So it's just a very uh, curious illusion. All these minor inaccuracies um, do not undermine the value. What I have said uh, allows me to claim that Nikitina's dissertation is a truly original, independent, complete study, which solves the task of theoretical and practical value for uh, synology. Uh, literary, for Chinese literary studies and Russian philology in general. These, uh, the principal academic value lies in the development of methodological principles of research in Chinese literature, conceptual understanding of the history of literary uh, prose in China, reconstruction understanding of the literary process in China, along with the definition of character and mechanism of the influence um, of historical, political, cultural, and ideological factors, reconstruction understanding of the dynamics of character portrayal in Chinese prose, um, and the introduction of little known um, sources, literary sources, uh, by Chinese characters. So, dissertation by Alexandra Nikitina complies with the major requirements set forth 
in order number 6821-1 as of September, the 1st of September 2016, on granting academic degrees at St. Petersburg State University. Alexander Nikitin should be conferred the academic degree of the uh, candidate um, the candidate of science, specialization 100103, foreign literature. Thank you very much. You have been able to keep within the, the time limit. Thank you very much once again. Now the floor goes to Professor Van Lee. Dear colleagues, I'm very honored to participate in this defense. I would like to say that the author of the thesis chose a very important topic because this topic fills in the gaps in the Chinese literary studies, both in Russia and in China. There are very few studies devoted to the second to the literature of the second half of the twentieth century. So I think that today we have touched upon very important issues, and therefore the thesis is relevant and it also has a novelty. So the thesis reveals academic knowledge of the author and also the extensive knowledge in the area of humanities, including history, literature, um, culture, and many other aspects. The author of the thesis is a highly qualified scholar. She uses such methods as a comparative method and the theory of receptive critics as her methods. The thesis is written in a logical way. And I think that all the material included in the thesis is relevant. I think that the a thesis has a high level of academic and practical value. So the evolution of the Chinese patrol of characters shown in a very convincing way. I think the author of the dissertation fulfilled her job superbly. And I think she was able to make some very important conclusions. She's, I think, is a very serious scholar and a very diligent scholar. In her thesis, I can see lots of prospects for the future for Russian sinology as well as Chinese literary studies. I think Alexandra Nikitina is familiar with the history of the 20th century and she was able to study the subject matter superbly. The number of sources she analyzed is quite large. Besides, she used different works to build up a theoretical background for her work. I think that all the previous works were not so detailed. The author of the thesis was able to fill in the gaps in Chinese sinology. And 
she is able to describe the literature of the 20th century very convincingly. So, in the introduction, she describes the objects and the aim of her thesis. And she is able to characterize the political system uh, of China in those period. Besides, she is able to show how the historical context was able to have an impact on literature. Alexandra Nikitina is able to systematize and analyze the Chinese prose of the 20th century. Besides, I, I think that she has very impressive knowledge of the literary processes of Chinese prose in the 20th century. Besides, she is familiar with the ideas of different political leaders related to Chinese literature. And therefore, the evolution of the sphere of characters is shown very convincingly. Because she combines the literary analysis and the historical context. I think that the author was able to analyze different characters in the pool of Chinese characters, especially brave women, for example. Besides, I think she was able to make accents on very important issues. I want to say that the work of Alexandra Nikitina seems very convincing. Besides, I can say that there are very few misprints in the work. So, I think the work is very exceptional and she showed herself as a very important young scholar. And the author was able to demonstrate deep knowledge of Chinese prose. So I think that the author was able to show various aspects of Chinese prose of the 20th century. Besides, So, in chapter 4, we see that there, there is no detailed analysis of any issue. Here I'm referring to the plot of the novella To Live, which does not have the description of the character of Shu Figui. Therefore, the character does not seem to be complete. 
Besides, I think that the thesis should have been completed with a vertical comparison. For example, she should have compared the sphere of characters in the 90s with the previous spheres of, of characters. Besides, I think that we uh, should not analyze some aspects of Chinese literary prose. For example, the author did not include the analysis of many important Chinese works of fiction, for example, The Sparkling Red Star and some others. So I think that the candidate should have added the following conclusion. We should not say that we deny all the artistic characters of that period. And we have a sim similar approach to the eight revolutionary modern plays. So today all these plays are very prominent and they are still on. Therefore, we can condemn only the ugly sphere of characters uh, and the relationships between characters in the works of fiction of the Cultural Revolution. Besides, I think that uh, in some parts of the thesis, we see only the description of the evolution, but not the reasons for the evolution. And I would like to say that there are some misprints in the thesis. For example, some hieroglyphs shouldn't, should have been written differently, and I have given a detailed account of this in my report. Besides, in the novel Bitter Herbs, female characters are characterized as men in skirts. This comparison seems to be inappropriate because after the liberation only women who belong to the bourgeoisie used to wear skirts. And besides, there are some misprints and some stylistic inaccuracies which I have pointed out in my thesis. So, now I would like to add some more positive characteristics of this thesis. So, I think that the author was able to show the subject matter in a very typical way and she was able to include the whole panorama of the Chinese prose. Besides, we see that the dissertation is well structured. We see different historical events which um, took place over the appropriate period. The thesis described only key political and historical events that serve as a background for the literary analysis. Besides, the candidate describes the characters very deeply, and she is able to describe the characters very completely. Finally, the thesis contains both factual information and analysis. So, in the end, I would like to say that the thesis of Alexandra Andreevna comply with the major requirements set forth in Order 6821-1 as of September the 1st, 2016, on granting academic degrees of St. Petersburg State University. And Alexandra Nikitina should be conferred the degree of the candidate of philology, specialization 10.0103, foreign literature, literature of the Middle and Far East. Thank you, Professor Van Leer. Now the floor is given to Dr. Vyacheslav Mikhailovich Rybakov.
I will try to keep within the time limit, so I'm going to make my report uh, more concise. In a few decades after the revolution, the development of literature in China uh, was defined by the interplay of the two uh, tendencies. Literary gifted people wanted to reflect the reality, focusing on its emotionally charged issues. Another natural strife was the strife of the ideological leadership to create imaginary reality which would kind of bring up the real life and inspire real life for the heroic deeds to bring the real life um, into line with the ideal life. The dissertation submitted by Alexandra Likitina focuses on this interesting and important socio-cultural process. It's really hard to overestimate the relevance of the study. The interrelation between government and authority is one of the burning and painful issues of the previous century. It's hardly possible to say that this problem has been solved uh, to the satisfaction of both parties and the market economy has sorted things out. It's more fair to say that we are still witnessing fluctuations, though uh, these fluctuations have taken a different shape. The experience of this kind obtained during the period of creating idiocracies is invaluable. What makes the dissertation of Alexandra Nikitina exceptionally valuable is that she introduces the Chinese part of this global experience. This part is a little studied and it's relatively little known in comparison with Russian and European traditions. The dissertation facilitates the um, revelation of the common and the unique in global social and cultural processes. The work by Alexandra Nikitina is rather a concise, however a complete and comprehensive study. It clearly determines all the major um, time periods uh, in creating the literary character of the new type, starting in China, starting with the talks at the Yanin Forum by Mao Zedong, and then um, finishing up with this, uh, with the more natural development, not yet a smooth development of literature at the end of the 20th century. The author is well informed. Uh, the review section and the section on the extent of the prior research are written at a very high level. Uh, this is also reflected in the impressive bibliography in Chinese, Russian and uh, European languages. The work embraces four uh, sections, introduction and character in literature of the three periods. Uh, what I find the most important in the introduction is the rationale the uh, Nikitina provides for the term of character portrayal and its definition. As the work focuses on character portrayal of the three periods, the author gives enough attention to the interpretation, to the definition of this term, uh, it reveals its history and contents. The three major chapters are, develop, are devoted to the analysis of ideological regulations of the uh, Communist Party of China in literature and the, the products of this literature or other personages that dwelt in this, these products and emerged as a reaction to these ideological stimuli. Nikitina is very thorough in showing how inconsistent ideologies of the Communist Party were. Um, they were inconsistent in changing the requirements for the amount of truth that can be reflected in literary writings. This process of degradation reached its climax during the Cultural Revolution, when um, real writers were excluded from the literary process and products of art were created by teams of peasants, soldiers and workers. From the 1977 up to the 20th century, in the wake of uh, fewer incidents and political ideological life in China, literature reinstated its position. Admittedly, all the findings of the research uh, find a thorough analysis in the dissertation. In general, I don't have any claims about the contents of the dissertation, neither do I have any claims to its structure or discourse. The dissertation is simply interesting for anyone 
who anyone dealing with the issues of the interrelation between ideology and art, power and creativity. The remarks I would like to make are not critical. They aim to improve the uh, discourse of the dissertation and do not concern its contents. Um, I'd like to focus on only uh, on just just one remark. I understand that the author has contemplated over this issue for 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 a long time, but the loan translation of uh, Chinese terms that she used and which denote uh, ideal hero, typical hero, and man in the middle would sound much better in Russian if we would have used the term personage or type. The word hero um, is actually ambiguous because it both uh, implies a character and the person of heroic deeds. Because the word, the term itself in Chinese uh, that denotes a ideal hero just means an, a personality or a person. Um, um, these uh, these characters were not actually ideal during this period. Were not uh, they did not actually personify the the best qualities. Rather, they strived for the heroic deeds for the sake of the party. And the term of the next period, which is translated as the new hero in Chinese simply means the new man, which is even uh, according to our Russian ideological cliches, should rather be translated as the new man, which Nikitina does in her own text. Well, in fact, Nikitina admits that she has got lost a bit herself because in the term deheroization that she uses, uh, hero is just a character, but not somebody ideal. Pages 23 and 24 of the Russian copy. Uh, there are some minor inaccuracies, and these inaccuracies do not anyhow undermine the value of, of the work. The dissertation of Nikitina um, complies with the major requirements set forth in Order 6821-1 as of the 1st of September 2016 on granting academic degrees at St. Petersburg State University. Alexandra Nikitina should be conferred the academic degree. The specialization 10.01.03, Foreign Literature, Literature of Middle and Far East. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, the final uh, report on the dissertation is from Mikhail Svorov, um, professor of St. Petersburg State University. As is known, the timeline of the development of philology uh, of Oriental literature um, the development of the uh, Western type of literature has just a uh, short time. It was developed just a short while ago. However, this timeline is marked by an intensive um, change of literary paradigms, not to mention the ever-growing volume of literary material. It explains the still existing disbalance in the extent of previous research of the medieval classical period and the literature of modern and contemporary era. One writing of medieval literature uh, might be reflected in dozens or hundreds of uh, research works, then the majority of modern writings um, ha has not yet entered the academic discourse. Uh, thus, any academic research which overcomes this disbalance, which is the case with the this by Alexandra Nikitina, has uh, is intrinsically relevant. Uh, it has at least the information value. Tedes by Alexandra Nikitina is interested in at least in two dimensions. First, the object of the research, character portrayal, and its historical evolution, is one of those characteristics of literature which give the most profound understanding of the essence of literature as a mirror of life, which reflects spiritual and or ideological condition of the society 
which brought it to life. In this respect, the topic of the dissertation seems fortuitous. It fits into the uh, complex of other research uh, on character portrayal in literature. This allows to create a more clear understanding about the the, the, the use of uh, the concept of character portrayal in the world literature in general. Alexander Nikitin effectively demonstrates um, how the changes in character portrayal in the Chinese prose of the second century, uh, how it's connected with those changes which took place in social and political life of China. These changes um, uh, centered around the implementation of the totalitarian ideology of Maoism, the close relationship between the character portrayal of Chinese prose and uh, official government policy uh, in the sphere of culture, um, supports my own conclusions about the development of character portrayal in the prose of another oriental country, Yemen, which had a similar political totalitarian regime in the 1970s, 1980s. What is uh, especially remarkable here is the absurd stereotypic, uh, are the absurd stereotypic plots and in, 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 uh, heroes in the years of Chinese revolution and a decline of the masculine and moral deficiency of male characters in the following period. This is what we could see in uh, the literature of Yemen. This supports the idea about the universal character of the reaction of character portrayal on similar external social and political factors. Here I would like to, to add that what, what, what made me laugh a bit about this crazy soldier, he was uh, frantic to get another um, military task. I was really laughing out loud because this, um, um, he resembled uh, the same crazy soldiers in uh, the literature of Yemen. Another obvious advantage of Nikitina's work is the scope and relevance of the literature and scholarly writings she has analyzed, which provided for the high degree of uh, reliability of the conclusions of the research. Uh, I mean 275 items uh, in the bibliography. Nikitina has analyzed 33 uh, literary works uh, in prose uh, over a um, 50 year period. Uh, these works were highly praised by uh, literary critics. Some of them, these works were analyzed for the first time in the academic discourse. Works of literary Chinese critics is another source of material. She has analyzed Russian, Western and Chinese writers on character portrayals. Uh, she has also analyzed Chinese government documents which regulated literary life in the second half of the 20th century. The dissertation by Alexander Nikitina is a complete um, academic research. Um, the major findings uh, have been revealed in the major publications of Nikitina and the synopsis of the dissertation. The final conclusions of Nikitina are convincing. They describe the changes in the Chinese prose of the uh, second half of the 20th century, which were incited by uh, internal political uh, factors. Along with the advantages of Nikitina's studies, I would like to focus on several um, inaccuracies which don't undermine its value. I'll start with the claims about the contents and the discourse. The first uh, remarks is about the ambiguity Nikitina uses in the introduction. Um, these, are, these terms concern uh, different types of uh, literary characters introduced by Chinese literary scholars. Who are these ideal heroes, typical heroes, round characters, flat characters, men in the middle? First, it's not really clear what these terms mean. Secondly, it's not really clear if they are mutually exclusive. For example, can an ideal character be a typical character at the same time or not? This happens maybe because the, uh, this was not the best translation of these terms. Uh, when Alexandra Nikitina gives uh, practical examples, that's uh, 
that bring, sheds light into what these terms mean, but uh, explaining this post factum is not proper for the work of such uh, status. For example, um, Mao Zedong required, um, required that literary works uh, would look more typical and more ideal. It sounds a bit strange. What's meant by typical and ideal? It's not that clear what Chinese literary scholars meant by typical and ideal because it that looks like um, mutually they look like mutually exclusive terms. Um, on some pages of the dissertation, uh, an ideal hero is given in opposition to the typical hero who doesn't have a chance uh, to live to remain in, in Chinese literature of the cultural revolution. Um, what concerns the man in the middle, uh, according to the dissertation, as I got it, uh, that's a character who is not quite clear in, in his attitude to Mao's transformation policy. So this is not actually then a term for literary studies, which we can apply to literature of any literature. Um, or in fact, as Nikitina uh, herself admits, um, the author of this term, the man in the middle, um, a Chinese literary scholar, Shao Quan Chuan Ling, neither his follower, neither him nor his followers, uh, could give a clear definition of this time. I wonder why. Of this term, I wonder why. In this light, um, it would have been better, perhaps, to use Russian terminology, um, the Russian typology of, of characters, some other terms and uh, concepts of Chinese origin, uh, like explanation or their post factum explanations are given. For example, in the introductions, some concepts like like definitions. Um, these uh, concepts are perhaps well known to anyone involved in Chinese studies, but not to anyone who studies Oriental literature. Um, like the theory of putting emphasis on three, uh, the policy of the former modernization, the cause of letting a hundred flowers bloom and a hundred scores of thought contend. Later, we find a similar story, for example, um, double hundred policy, uh, which is explained at the contraction of the cause of letting a hundred flowers bloom and a hundred scores of thought content. It's not really clear how we get this contraction. Um, the, what's meant by the ten revolution model plays, um, are there some specific plays or is it just, just an abstraction? Um, on page 95 of the Russian um, version of the dissertation, um, Nikitina notes, literary um, communist heroes uh, created during the um, era of Mao Zedong Chinese writers based these characters uh, upon the Soviet literature. I wonder how Chinese writers were able to uh, get introduced with um, Soviet writings. Um, this statement looks un un unclear. Um, quote, after June 1989, the old political system and ideology persisted, but society has become more stable and paid less attention to the politics and showed greater tolerance to the existing uh, social system. Does it mean that during the years of the dictatorship the society was yet stable? Were people uh, more tolerant to the social system? And what's meant by this social system here? And what kind of intolerance did this show? Um, there are some incorrect wordings and phrases in the dissertation. Um, I will skip this part. Nikitina often uses uh, the word combination card the workers. Um, I think what she actually meant uh, were party officials. Otherwise, uh, China seems to be a huge human resource department. Um, there are some minor grammar mistakes and misprints. What concerns the text layout? Then there is one uh, remark I have about the titles of literary works and uh, academic publications in it. Um, section 1.3 uh, 
English uh, theoretical works and their titles, uh, titles of English theoretical works are given in English. Um, Nikitina should have um, given Russian translations as she did that uh, with Chinese works because um, the titles of works in English uh, can be found in the bibliography. It's, um, it doesn't seem necessary to um, use Chinese characters because that makes the text cumbersome. Uh, there is no need to use Chinese characters uh, in the body of the dissertation because we can find um, the titles of uh, works in the bibliography list in Chinese. Uh, despite these um, inaccuracies, Nikitina's uh, study is a serious contribution into the research of Chinese, Chinese literature. The materials of the studies can be used to improve educational programs, uh, to improve textbooks, and to solve further theoretical issues facing Chinese literary studies. The dissertation of Alexandra Nikitina, the evolution of the character portrayal in Chinese prose of the second half of the 20th century, complies with the major requirements set forth in Order 6821-1 as of the 1st of September 2016 on granting academic degrees at St. Petersburg State University. Alexandra Nikitina should be conferred the academic degree of the candidate of um, Philology, uh, Desperalization 10.01.03, Foreign Literature, Literature of Middle and Forest. Thank you very much. So we are through with uh, giving the reports on the dissertation from the members of the dissertation board. Now Alexandra Nikitina is going to answer uh, the questions set forth in the reports. Dear members of the dissertation board, I would like to thank you for reading my thesis and writing your reports. It was very important for me to hear your comments and remarks. I am sorry for the stylistic inaccuracies and some misprints, and I accept the informative remarks, and of course, I will make use of them when I'm working on the monograph based on this uh, thesis. I would like to comment uh, on some remarks. First of all, I would like to comment on the remarks by Professor Starazhuk and Professor Kravtsova about the high degree of formalization of ancient and medieval Chinese literature. Here I used the studies made by Professor Riftin, who emphasized stereotypical and conventional characters in ancient folk folklore and Chinese literature. This can be attributed to the fact that modern Chinese literature is consist consistent with those genres that were studied by Professor Rifton. But Chinese literature has a long history and it is very varied. Therefore, it was impossible to include all the details in my thesis. And I agree that we should not emphasize the absence of individuality in classical literature and I will change these statements in my future monograph. Now, I would like to comment on the remarks by, by Professor Suvorov and Rybakov. Uh, the remark concerns the terms. In the introduction, I'm writing about the subject matter and I, I give some terms that were identified by Chinese scholars. These terms were identified either by Chinese scholars or they are based on Western works. I do not describe the terms in detail because I do not make use of them uh, in my thesis when I'm analyzing the works. However, I use only three terms, which are ideal character, typical, or uh, to be exact, ideal hero, typical hero, and a man in the middle. I agree that we could have used the word character not to confuse with the heroic um, hero. However, there are no single terms in Western uh, literary studies. They can use both the term an ideal hero or a model man, and the word hero can be used both to denote character and protagonist. 
the term a man in the middle is quite vague. It was coined by Chinese writers and literary critics in the 60s. And we can un only un imagine how difficult it was for writers when Mao Zedong urged them to describe ideal and typical people. But uh, these two things mutually exclude each other. Ironically speaking, probably they thought that ideal and typical people would be possible in the future communist society. Now I move on to the remark about the explanation of Chinese terms. When I'm working with a monograph, I will think about how to nominate the characters to avoid ambiguity, and I will make all the necessary footnotes. However, some Chinese terms have translation equivalents into Russian, for example, staff employees, which are used to denote government official or government authorities. Now I would like to comment on the remark by Professor Van Lier about the fact that the song of Wang Hai is analyzed very thoroughly and it couldn't have been connected with the principles of the three prominences and the principle tall, big and perfect. The Soviet critic paid much attention to this novel, therefore it was important for me to analyze it as well. The date of the publication was not so important. What was important for me is that this novel is devoid of any artistic merits, but it is a result of the literary policies of the previous period when the authors worked in a highly regulated society and could not show any individuality. In my thesis, I write that the character served as an example of ideal heroes that were canonized in the next period. The novel anticipated the conventionality of the Cultural Revolution. This novel I use uh, in order to illustrate the typical ca traits of Chinese literature in the 1960s, and I do not describe in detail some works of fiction of the Cultural Revolution because I was able to describe uh, the typical characters of the sphere of characters in some other works of fiction. Here I would like to quote uh, Cheng Shemin, who also says that um, the Cultural Revolution, here a quote, is a result of the consistent radicalization and revolutionization in art. Now I would like to comment on two remarks. Professor, Professor Van Lea points out that there is no deep analysis of the character from the novel to live, and Professor Kravtsova points out that I do not compare the character from the Song of Everlasting Sorrow with the character from the poem by Bo Chuzi. Uh, in the first version of the thesis, I had a very long paragraph on this issue. Some Chinese and Western scholars compare him with the character from the sh short story by Zhu Shuli. And the character in this story is also called Fugui. For example, David Van, an American scholar, is writing about this. However, I decided to omit this paragraph in the final version of the thesis, but I am going to include this paragraph in my monograph and to pay more attention to the analysis of the character from this Song of Everlasting Sorrow. However, it was important for me to include the point of view about copies and clones, which belongs to Michael Berry. I accept that uh, some quotations were translated not quite correctly. I understand that I should have given a wider translation. By millennial heritage of China, I mean a lot of works of fiction which belong to the Chinese heritage. 
and another quote. The writers devote denied abstract nature of the characters to the extent that they stopped portraying lifelong characters. Uh, this is a quote from the presentation by Zhang Guanyang, who wrote that because of simplistic approaches and dogmatism, the writers stopped writing about lifelong characters. Uh, I can comment on the other remarks later, or I can do it now if I have time. Thank you uh, to the members of the dissertation board, and thank you for the valuable remarks. Thank you, Alexandra Andreevna. Does anybody want to make a, a comment? Uh, you can ask your questions. I have a question. I want to ask you about a man in the middle. If the man in the middle still used in Chinese prose, or does he belong to the previous period? The man in the middle belongs to the previous period. It's not a literary term. It was a, a character who did not have any solid political views. For example, a peasant who didn't know whether he should take part in the collectivization. Now you, you can take your seat. Now I give the floor to the thesis supervisor, Professor Radionov. Dear colleagues, both from St. Petersburg and from Beijing, thank you for finding time and reading the thesis of Alexandra Nikitina and for giving your valuable and positive remarks about this thesis. I will be quite brief. I think that Alexandra Nikitina was able to introduce systematic and comprehensive research and make her research very comprehensive and she included the comparison with the uh, context, with the historical context and the political context. As her thesis advisor, I can say that I was very happy with her thesis and with her research findings. She had to go a long way. We should have defended the thesis three years ago, but for some reasons we were unable to do this. I really hope that the dissertation board will grant the academic degree to Alexandra Nikitina, specialization 10.0103. Thank you. Now we'll make a break for the discussion. After the break, please come back. Please switch off the sound since the panel discussion will not be broadcast. Please, non-members of the board, leave the room.
哎哎，王老师，我们现在不能谈了，现在我们已经继续我们的那个一个典礼，哎。<笑>